Today I'm sharing with you my top tips for virtual teaching. So if you are teaching virtually right now or even hybrid where you have some virtual classrooms, then you wanna stick around for this video. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tyranny, also known as Miss Tyranny, and this is the number one place for new teachers who are teaching in Title I schools looking to create well-managed and highly engaging virtual and face-to-face -face classrooms. So these are some of the top tips that I'm going to be sharing with you today for virtual teaching. So I have been virtual teaching since March 2020 and these are some of the things that I do every day in my classroom that truly have proven to be very effective and especially very useful when it comes to increasing student engagement, maximizing instructional time, and just all around creating a more simple and easy to implement structure that saves my time as well. So with that said, let's get right into these tips. So one top tip that I wanna to give to you is shortening your lesson. Listen, do not keep your students on these Zoom calls, on these Teams calls, on these Google Meet calls for hours on end. We don't need to do that. We don't even need to really keep them on these Zoom calls or on these virtual calls for even an hour. To be very honest with you, my lessons last anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes in length. And I'm currently teaching sixth grade math. So once I have given my students the content that they need, they've interacted with the content, I've been able to measure to what extent did they master or meet my learning target for the day, then I release them and I send them on their way because we have to understand that these kids are going to multiple different classrooms with multiple different teachers. And you know, they have something called Zoom fatigue and that is real. So we wanna just make sure that we're giving our students exactly what they need and then we're sending them on their way. Another tip that I have for you is picking one platform. This is something that really has helped me with virtual teaching. I don't try to try out a bunch of different platforms each and every week or each and every day. I pick one platform, I stick with it. The benefits to this is it really helps to create a system and a routine around the virtual learning environment. So for example, if I'm picking one platform and my students know, okay, we're going to be joining into the Pear Deck each and every day. And they know how to join in. They know how to get the code. They know how to type in their first and last name and join the Pear Deck and begin working right away. They know how to use the tools to, whether that is draw on the slide or do a multiple choice option. My students know exactly how to use this tool inside and out because I've been very consistent with it. So that is one of my best pieces of advice to you is just pick one platform and stick with it. It makes things easier for your students and easier for you as a teacher. The next thing, when it comes to virtual teaching, we are not reinventing the wheel. So there are many, many resources online now. I want you to make sure you're vetting your resources, of course, but there are so many teachers around the internet who have created amazing resources for you to use, and a lot of them are free. You need to take that and use it. Stop spending your time making things from scratch. We don't have time to do that. That's the way to fast track yourself to teacher burnout. And there's already several obstacles that we are facing and challenging challenges that we are dealing with right now in this pandemic. So with that said, you really want to make sure that if there's something you're teaching your kids, what is already made for you? What has your district already made for you? My district has done a really good job at making a lot of resources for teachers. So we literally do not have to make anything. Now, a lot of teachers like to tweak it and edit it, but that's better than starting from scratch, right? So I want you to be very intentional about how can you best use your time? 
And a lot of the times we can use our time better in other ways than trying to reinvent and recreate things that are already made for us. So the next tip is I always make sure to give my students a exit ticket before I release them. So a lot of the teachers, one of their struggles right now is with students maybe not completing assignments that they give to them. Well, if you have your students complete the assignment with you while they're on the call, then you'll have a lot more students who actually do the work because you are making sure that the work is completed and that you have received it on your end as the teacher before you release those students off of your call and they're gone for the day and then you have zero assignments turned in. So really make sure that whether it's an exit ticket like what I do in my classroom or an assignment or whatever, let them complete that on the call with you, right? And if it's something that you know is too long, that's gonna take them a lot of time to complete, so it's really not working for you to have them complete on the call, then you might need to think about changing the assignment that you're giving to them. Does it really need to be that long, that detailed, that intense? Modify it down, three to four questions, and send students on their way. Okay, so the next tip I have for you is using breakout rooms. This is a great way to create a student-centered approach to virtual learning. Students love to be independent learners. They love working with their peers and collaborating. And now more than ever, because they've been away from their classmates and friends for so long, they love having the time to do activities with their peers in breakout rooms. So I highly recommend that you implement breakout rooms in your classroom. Your students will love it. And when you think about engagement, engagement will skyrocket if you have the right systems in place. So if you don't have the right systems in place and maybe you're struggling with breakout rooms, then I wanna encourage you actually to go ahead and enroll right now in my virtual student engagement explosion workshop. I'll leave the link for you down below. The last tip that I have for you and probably one of my most favorite tips is I allow my students to keep their cameras off. Please allow your students to keep their cameras off. This is something that is like one of my hills to die on because honestly, you do not need your students to have their cameras on in order for them to be engaged or do your work. You know that your students could have their cameras on, you could see them and be monitoring what they're doing, and still they may be tuning you out mentally. Just because I'm looking at someone, even as an adult, even though I may be looking at someone, that doesn't mean I'm really listening to them. You have to properly engage your students by giving them something worth engaging with, right? So I don't have the issue of not having my students engaged because I find other ways and other methods to engage them. The cameras don't need to be on. If you're someone who says, I need my students' cameras on so I can see their facial expressions and really read them to understand whether or not they get the content and if it's making sense to them, you need to find other ways to check for understanding. There's plenty of other ways to check for understanding. Our students could have their cameras off for multiple different reasons. Bandwidth. With all those cameras on and some of our Title I babies with the cameras on, that slows things down for them and their bandwidth. That may be one reason why their camera is off. They could be shy, anxious, multiple different reasons. The fact of the matter is a camera does not need to be on for a kid to learn. You need to reflect on yourself and your teacher actions. What can you do differently to make sure your students are learning and actively engaged with you, even with their cameras off. I do it every day so I know it's possible. And so if you're looking for tips and more strategies on how you can properly increase student engagement in your virtual classroom, even with students' cameras off, then I wanna go ahead and offer you the opportunity to join my free four-day video mini course. I am giving you four top tips. If you found this video helpful, you're gonna have even more 
to be excited about and more value offered to you in this mini course. So go ahead and click the link down below in my description. It's completely free for you. And that is going to really instantly increase your virtual student engagement. If you apply the tips that I'm sharing with you in this mini course, you're going to see an instant increase in your virtual student engagement. And I'm so excited for you. Make sure you leave a comment down below. What other videos do you want to see from me? I'm so excited. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.